Hi, my name is Raquel, in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money in the base, on your mind, or in your hand. It's one of those words, they don't translate correctly. They, a lot of people are lying, There's just so many lies. I wish the president wouldn't lie about this, uh, oh, 9-11 and, and, you know, the Kennedy assassination. But there's the word kragma that's not translated correctly. And you can see that in context, it means no one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And here's the unabridged Greek-English lexicon by Liddell Scott. And it shows you the word kragma means the impress on the coin or stamp money coin. And there's a lot of things like I'm saying that they don't tell you the truth about. It's just like one lie after another. This guy, um, Obama, he was giving his State of the Union speech and he says, you know, we've got like a hundred years of oil left. But they, um, just a few days after he came out with that speech, he there was an article in the New York Times that... Uh, shows that that's not true. They, there's, um, it's just kind of a very confusing thing about this natural gas. They, these companies, they're always exaggerating how much they have because uh, it helps them, you know, get investing, investments and stuff. Let's see, I underlined a bunch of stuff here. You can just look at it. Uh, that, yeah, they, they knocked the estimate down 40 percent, so it, it wasn't even close to 100 years. If, if you look at this here, they're uh, saying that this shale over there, it's not 17 years, but six years, and there's um, less over there. Yeah, they mentioned the State of the Union, how Obama said there's a uh, 100-year supply. There's, if you Google like 100 year supply, you'll see a lot of articles about it. But anyway, I just got over the flu. It was like, oh, it started like two weeks ago, so I'm over it now. But it just, when you have a sickness like that, it just makes everything seem so miserable. And uh, I was looking at the tax lien sale, it's going to come up. Um, if you don't pay the property on your tax, or you don't pay the taxes on your property, you end up losing your house, which is um, how I made my living. And they have a whole huge list of these properties that are available, and you can bid on these. There's, I don't know, about 11,000 of these this year. Let's see here. Yeah, about 11,000. So I was looking through here today. And I noticed that some of these people that I sold property to haven't paid the taxes. So I'm going to have to go down there to the tax lien sale and buy these tax liens. It, I already knew one of them wasn't, but this economy, I just, you know, it's like you play by, by the rules and, and um, you know, you get screwed. Who would ever think that this economy and the real estate would get this bad in Arizona? It's like a limited supply of land here. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to live in the warm down here. But uh, these bankers screwed up. These people are giving mortgages to people that didn't couldn't afford it. So they uh, bid on these funny money games. It's all this funny stock market stuff and um, this f paper money that isn't worth anything. This people, it's so ironic that it says trust in God or in God we trust on this dollar bill, but it's really just uh, trusting in money and, and uh, I just uh, don't see how anybody can have much faith in this government. It's like, you know, I talked to my older sister and well, her brothers and my brothers-in-law are just like they're smart, but they're they're naive, and you know they can't believe that our government would kill John Kennedy, and um, they did though. It's like you know the CIA killed presidents in all over the world, and uh, they've done stuff like that, and that's what they did here in the United States. If you look at like 
on the Warren Commission, they, they, Gerald Ford, who later became president, was on the Warren Commission, and Richard Nixon was in Dallas the day of the assassination, and th there's books that tied George Bush Sr. into the Kennedy assassination. Of course, he became head of the CIA before he became president, and uh, he, there was like, um, he was involved with um, the Bay of Pigs invasion, and there's evidence linking these anti-Castro Cubans to Kennedy's assassination because he failed them in that Bay of Pigs thing. And then, of course, this 9-11 um, thing, is it, the evidence is so much better, and it's come out so much quicker. It took a long time, well, not that long, but it took a little while for these people to be suspicious of the Kennedy assassination. I think Mark Lane was one of the first, and uh, he wrote a, Mark Lane wrote several books about the Kennedy assassination, and one of them was about um, E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis, who were Watergate burglars, and they look exactly like these tramps that were arrested behind the grassy knoll. So um, they were, these E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis, they were both uh, CIA agents, and they were anti-Castro, too. And uh, there's one of the tramps, and there's the other tramp, and pictures of Hunt and Sturgis. I made a list here of these people that served on the Ward Commission, and then in 1975, they had this thing called the Rockefeller Commission. And Rockefeller was uh, vice president at the time. And, uh, and, and um, Ronald Reagan served on this uh, Rockefeller Commission. And so did Lyman Lemnitzer. And Lyman Lemnitzer was like one of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or something like that under the Kennedy administration. And he devised this plan to make it look like an airliner full of students was attacked by the Cubans, and, and then they were going to blame it on Cuba. It's called a false flag attack, and it's kind of coincidental that, you know, 9-11, they, they made it look like these people were shot down, or, or no, they weren't shot down, but they crashed these planes. It's that, that's that one in Pennsylvania that, that looks like it was shot down, that Shanksville, Pennsylvania 9-11 thing. It, the first responders, you know, they had a whole bunch of ambulances come out there, and all it was was like a smoldering pit, and a lot of the first responders said there were no bodies, there was no luggage, there was no, no evidence of any airplane anywhere. It's the most mysterious thing. So what really happened to that plane that, that it was allegedly these heroes on there? I think they made a Hollywood movie out of it in order to brainwash the people about that plane in Shanksville that apparently they said that some of the people on the plane retaliated and broke through the cabin door or something and 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 caused the plane to crash. But um, there's something fishy about that because there's like no evidence of a plane crash there. And, and it's just amazing how they can cover this up. It's like you know, why doesn't the major news media have a story? I mean, what happened to the plane in Shanksville? Why isn't there any major news investigation? It's kind of like with the Kennedy assassination, uh, James Earl Warren was told that unless they came to some kind of innocuous conclusion that, you know, it would cause a lot of people to be suspicious of uh, who killed Kennedy. So um, this guy... Uh, Jack Ruby, who was a gangster in Chicago, he uh, shot the Harvey Oswald point blank. I think um, this guy, Officer Tippett, was supposed to have killed Oswald, but Oswald immediately went home, and I think he probably thought he was being framed or something, and he, Oswald went and grabbed a 38 that he had, and, and as he was walking to get away, he ran into Officer Tippett and, and shot him. And so, uh, and so Jack Ruby eventually killed Oswald because Oswald would have spilled the beans and said, hey, I, I was set up. And Oswald had, like, friends that were in the CIA, like this man that 
that got him the job at the Texas School Book Depository was a CIA agent. His name was De Morgan Schmidt or something like that. And De Morgan Schmidt was about to testify. In 1979, they had another investigation into the Kennedy assassination. They also looked into the Martin Luther King assassination, which is very, it's just as weird too, like that guy James Earl Ray was uh, a setup. He was a patsy. You know, the the handlers told him to bring a gun to this place, just like they did to Lee Harvey Oswald. And so it had his fingerprints all over it. And then the CIA just stashed the gun in, in the Texas School Book Depository. Or in the case of James Earl Ray, they threw it in a vestibule. I mean, it's, the whole thing is just so ridiculous. And, of course, Martin Luther King was just about ready to have, like, one of these marches on Washington. He was going to have millions of people show up in Washington to protest poverty. But uh, they ended up having to kill him. And, and uh, then they got rid of uh, Bobby Kennedy, too, Robert Kennedy, uh, uh, John Kennedy's brother. He was running for president. And uh, he was in Los Angeles, and he just finished giving a pep rally to his supporters when this guy, Sirhan Sirhan, started firing this gun in the pantry. And everybody w that was there said that Sirhan never got that close to Kennedy. But the fatal shot w was fired like at point-blank range. They can see the powder burns and things like that. So... Saran had no memory of even doing all this stuff, and Saran was found to be one of these people that is very easy to hypnotize. They, they called a Manchurian candidate, and um, they had a movie come out about this time where it had Frank Sinatra in it. It was called The Manchurian Candidate, and it was about some guy that was caught in Korea, and they brainwashed him, and they hypno-programmed him to... Um, I think it was a, an assassination attempt uh, in the movie. And uh, so somebody fired the, the fatal shot at closer range to, to kill Kennedy. And it, you see the picture of Bobby Kennedy. He's holding this, this bow tie or this uh, tie in his hand. You know, the, the kind of tie, you, you know, with, with the... Um, it, but it's one of those kind of ties that you can pull off because the security guard, and the security guard had like weird connections. His name was something like Eugene Caesar or something like that. And he had a 22 that he admitted that, and they apparently, I don't think they ever found his gun or they did find it and they, they never really tested it. And, and they found more bullet holes in the pantry than there was bullets in Saran's gun. I mean, the whole thing is just so ridiculous. And um, so they had to get Robert Kennedy because he would have had a thorough investigation into his brother's assassination. But you can imagine, you know, if the truth got out, like if, if we got enough prominent people together, you know, that guy um, Oliver Stone made a pretty good movie about JFK, and they even show those three tramps in there. I remember when I first found out that Oliver Stone was making a movie about it, I sent him one of these newspapers that I wrote about the Kennedy assassination. And, uh, and I wrote this back in, uh, what was it, um, 87, winter of 87. And I showed these, these tramp pictures. I showed you that earlier. And, um, and this magic bullet, you can see this magic bullet over here. And... Um, the one on the left uh, there, the, this one here is the magic bullet. They found it on a, on a gurney in the hospital. Apparently, the bullet made a miraculous trajectory. It's called the magic bullet theory or something like that. And uh, apparently, it changed directions in midair because they say that Oswald only fired three shots and uh, one of them missed and... Uh, and, uh, I mean, you could see Kennedy's head being thrown back like that. He got hit from the front. So if they told the truth about, you know, the Kennedy assassination or 9-11, or you know, George Bush 
uh, is going to go down in history, he thinks, as saving this world from the oil catastrophe that we're facing. It's like, uh, it's called peak oil, and the, you know, oil is a finite resource. So, you know, we've got to steal this oil in order to keep this economy rolling. And the price of oil just rose above $100 recently, but it has been that high before. I think the highest it's been was something like 135 and then the economy went kaput. So the supply or the demand went down, and so the price went down. But it's starting to go up again. They're saying that the price of gas has never been this high this soon. You know, usually it, the price of gas peaks in the, in the, um, in the summer, but uh, it's going to uh, get worse. And, and so, like, I just, you know, it's just like these people are living in la-la land, you know. Like, at least my older sister is aware of peak oil, but She's just, she and my brothers-in-law are, and so many other people, you know, I was asking one of my friends, well, we were talking about sheeple, you know, like uh, sheep and people, it's a, it's, and we were talking about, you know, what percentage of the people in the United States are like sheeple, you know, like total gullible fools that, you know, they don't even watch the news or they're not concerned about politics and and they're, they don't have open minds. And uh, so, they're, they're, you know, a person that uh, is irrational and obstinate is a bigot. A bigot isn't somebody who denies the Holocaust or, uh, or, or um, thinks that, you know, the CIA was involved in Kennedy's assassination. It's a, a bigot is somebody who's irrational and obstinate and and there's a lot of good arguments about this 9-11 thing, but, you know, that they, they, they always come back with some other kind of thing. They, it's really kind of hard to, to debate this with anybody. I've read lots of books on it. It's, it's like the, those two World Trade Center buildings just collapsed and disintegrated. There's, you know, what, what happened to all the glass and concrete? And there was, like, massive explosions in there. A lot of the witnesses said that they heard explosions, just like a controlled demolition. They heard like a boom, boom, boom. And it was just like a controlled demolition. So, uh, and then like uh, with the uh, Pentagon, it's like uh, a perfectly round hole was put in the building and and, and then the, the roof of the Pentagon collapsed. There was fires in there, but it seems more obvious to me that like some kind of a cruise missile or a radio-controlled jet flew in there and, um, and created that. And, um, so, I mean, it's like, you know, how could our, our, you know, our Pentagon, you know, the best technology in the world, allow, you know, some plane to crash in there? I mean, you know, there's a, what is it, that Air Force Base? There's a Air Force Base just down the Potomac River, um, less than 100 miles away. They could have scrambled some jets when they knew that plane was coming and they could have shot it down. I mean, it's just totally outrageous that this could happen. But um, there's, you know, it's just like uh, that that, um, very few people realize that Building 7 collapsed on 9-11 too. It was the third building in New York City to collapse on 9-11. And it was adjacent to the World Trade Center towers. There were small fires in the Building 7, but a fire has never caused a skyscraper to, to collapse before. And even an airplane going in there, they designed the World Trade Center to withstand an impact from an airplane. I mean, you know, like fog could come into New York. I mean, New York is a very big airplane hub there and the plane could easily get off track and crash in there in the fog or something. So they built those, and not only that, but like the um, Empire State Building had an airplane crash in there <clears throat> and it didn't collapse. And so like the, the heavy steel girders in the center of the World Trade Center building was what hold it up. 
I mean, the plane can crash in there, and it destroyed the perimeter, which didn't really hold anything up. It's the <laughs> buildings in the center there, the girders in the center that held it up. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it when I first heard that the building just came straight down. You know, I mean, I figured an airplane hit it and it came straight down. It doesn't make sense. And there's a lot of architects and engineers that um, are skeptical of this. And um, they, they had this guy on camera. He was in, in uh, the Netherlands. He was an architect, and they showed him pictures of this Building 7 coming down, and he never saw it before. So they said, hey, what do you think of this? You know, what do you, what, Why do you think this building collapsed? Did it look like a controlled demolition to you? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a controlled demolition. And when they told him that that was Building 7 that collapsed on 9-11, <coughs> They were um, very skeptical. <coughs> Boy, I gotta drink some water here. My th <coughs> throat's getting dry. <coughs>